right we are at the last section of our video and this will be on the multiple regression bootstrap is particularly effective when we have non-normally distributed data okay before we run the bootstrap let us go and check uh, how no how normally is our data distributed okay uh, descriptive statistics frequency let's put all of them the statistics let's check mean and median the standard deviation skewness and this okay go to chart click on histogram click ok and ok now if we see our histogram right even though it is not you know 100% bell curve and uh, in real life it is um, it is very rare that you get 100% bell curve but the variables that we have um, they they seems okay Okay, okay. When, when they are normally distributed, there will be no difference in the result generated by using bootstrap and without using bootstrap. Okay, so this is just uh, to, to have a, a primary idea on what actually bootstrapping does. Now, let's go and uh, let me close this. Okay, let's go to the data here. Now, let's go and do our multiple regression linear dependent. We all know this. Okay. Let's go to statistics um, we, we have already used this Durbin we have used our case wise diagnostics uh, let's go and have a, a descriptives okay um, part and partial correlation collinearity you, if you remember we have already done this right plot we don't need to do a plotting over here go to option and see okay case pair wise now always remember okay um, if you save any of these information over here then your your, your bootstrapping will not work right so go to bootstrap and perform bootstrapping by thousand which is a default value click on okay click on okay, okay now let us see the models mm -hmm. because these descriptives are coming from uh, the bootstrap so you will have this lower and upper and then below. so let's go and have a look on model summary what does it say here the model summary you can see the r value you can see the r square and you can see the adjusted r okay and we can see the significance level is at 0, 0, 0. So this R value is the multiple correlation coefficient value. So R square is the variation in uh, dependent variable that is reported by independent variable. So basically what we can see here is, um, you know, almost a 40% of variation, right? And there is another value over here that is adjusted R square. If you see this R square, it is based on the sample and uh, it is considered that it is positively biased, okay? So while doing a model summary, what we consider more is the adjusted R square. And uh, what this adjusted R square does, it like, uh, it corrects um, the positive bias, you know, the, the, the positive bias uh, created by R square is corrected by adjusted R square. So what we look into the model summary is the value of adjusted R square. R square for the overall model was 38% with an adjusted R square of 36%. So where this 36% is coming from here and 38% is coming from here. Okay. A medium size effect is reported by the model so what do we mean by medium size is below 3 is small between 3 to 5 is medium and uh, above 5 is um, strong or the large size right so, okay. so let us go and observe our ANOVA table here is the ANOVA table copy Let's bring it here. So over here, what do we see is the significance value, the degree of freedom, which is indicated by DF, and the residuals that is uh, 96. What does this uh, degree of freedom says is that indicates the number of independent variables, you know, uh, that can vary in an analysis without uh, without breaking an uh, breaking any any constraint. So the, so let us report this table where we indicate this degree of freedom with F. Okay, and comes the regression value that's three and comes the residual value that's 96 okay always remember to give the space between uh, number and signs so this is the report put f that's 20.055 okay 
and our p-value is less than 0 0.00 as soon as soon by ANOVA table what we can conclude is the model as a whole was was significant to predict job satisfaction which is our dependent variable yeah. and yeah, in the table now we can bring this over here so the r square yeah. so the r square for overall model was 30 percent with adjusted r square of 36 percent 36 percent which is a medium side effect Variations in job satisfaction is by the linear combination of the predictor variables, which is normative commitment, effective commitment, and continuous commitment. Right. So let us go to our report and let us get this coefficient table. Bring it to the Microsoft Word. Let us out of it. Before we move move ahead, let us quickly understand the equation of um, regression. Okay. You know that there is there is one carrot sign. It is called y hat equals to b zero plus b one x one plus b two b two x2 plus b3 x3 yeah, and it keeps on going so y is our expected variable or we can say predicted uh, variable from uh, different independent variables okay you can see b0 this is uh, b0 this is our intercept in uh, spss it is reported uh, through something called constant okay so b1 b2 and b3 these are the variables and x1 x2 x3 they do not the factors that are associated with independent variables let's not go into deep into this one the reason i explained this is because on the basis of this model we are going to present our report okay so let's keep it like this uh, for now and let us move forward if we see the significance level all of them are significant okay and if you see these two area this is another important area that we need to look one is the this is called slope coefficient and this is called beta okay so this uh, slope coefficient you will see that these three values are positive value now how do we explain this slope uh, coefficient is on the basis of unit value okay on one unit so what does it mean by so what does it mean by increase in one unit of normative commitment has positive association of 0.384 to job satisfaction okay likewise increase in one unit in effective commitment has positive association of 0.393 to job satisfaction right now because all of these values are positive so in case if there is a negative as a negative value then what it means is that increase in every one unit of normative commitment there will be or there is negative association of 0 0.384 to job satisfaction maybe you found it confusing yeah now let me explain it in better way so let's say for example salary is our dependent variable and experience is 0 0.384 let's say for example so looking into this two let's consider salary as uh, job satisfaction And experience as normative commitment if you look into this what does it mean increase in one year of uh, experience will have positive association of 384 in the salary what it predicts is if there is an increase of one year of experience there will be an increase of 0.384 in the salary you got that okay so that is what uh, this um, slope coefficient 
indicates okay and it is, it is very important because uh, what i always believe is it is not only the reporting but it is understanding the core theme or you know it is understanding the core meaning of of these components so that uh, the life becomes easier forever <laughs> so let us do the final write up okay now in the final model all the independent variables were statistically significant with normative commitment okay what is the t value of normative commitment 2.409 while our p value is 0.1018 and our beta is this is our beta okay this is indicated by this sign our beta is 0.230 while our effective commitment is 3.992 which is this p value is 0 and our beta is 0.366 okay and our continuous commitment is 2.609 is uh, 0 0.1010 and our beta is 244 in job satisfaction the final predictive equation was now this is where we utilize this formula over here okay this this equation the equation of regression so what is what is y that is job satisfaction equals 2 and what did i say here this was our constant value okay that is 16.175 and plus oh sorry i forgot to remove this minus so we are taking this slope coefficient okay plus 0.384 normative commitment plus what is our b2 0 0.393 that is our effective commitment and 0.253 that is our continuous commitment okay so and why we are not reporting x1 x2 x3 is because we don't right we don't have it uh, that's fine remember to italicize this t dun 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 so we are done with this section now what we are also asked to report is uh, the details of every independent variable okay so let us write that part as well right the is this positive or negative that's positive the positive slope okay what we mean by slope is li like what i said this is called slope coefficient okay the positive slope for normative commitment which is 0.384 as predictor of job satisfaction indicated there was about a how much point one for about 0 0.384 increase in job satisfaction for each one point increase in normative commitment yeah do you remember what i explained earlier so what we are doing is we are just uh, putting into our writing that whatever i have explained in other words the job satisfaction tend to increase as normative commitment increases okay now let me go back to something called correlations and this nice little bunny over here okay that's part what does this mean and where actually it comes from okay so let me take you back to our database 
let's go here while regression linear regression what did we do here do you remember in statistics we created this part and partial correlation where is this result coming is from this area okay part and partial correlation if you click this then only you get right so it is the sign of sr square and we need to report this sr square as well so the squared semi partial efficient which is called sr square okay that estimated how much variance in job satisfaction was predictable from normative commitment was how much is that 0.193 okay indicating that of the variance in in the job satisfaction is uniquely accounted for by normative commitment when effective commitment and continuous commitment are control so you have wonderfully done and uh, thank you very much for your patience um, i really appreciate that please don't forget to like don't forget to comment and just click on that subscribe button um, anything you know uh, any questions uh, please feel free thank you very much hope to see you again bye bye